the gift of Christianity to non-Romans. So they gradually allowed it to, into the pagan eye, or at least it spread into the, the pagans, so to speak, to the, the rural people. But uh, they did not want to give it to the, um, the Romans. And as you know, Ireland actually was the first non-Roman country to be given Christianity. They already had it, but they were officially given it by Patrick. But um, I'm fascinated, though, with the connection between the <clears throat> the Middle East, or, or if you like, more it's more the the, um, the Black Sea, the northern. I, I think our folks came down through the uh, the Bosphorus, through the Dardanelles, and out into the. Mediterranean and just kept on going because well all the good spots were already taken you know by the Macedonians and the on the one and the, the Greeks and uh, all the various islands and uh, on the uh, east. I, I believe that they came and went and it's very interesting that the the very early invaders if you like of Ireland they would they, there was a number of waves and they all seem to come from the Black Sea, from the southern coast of the Black Sea, which is exactly where you come from. Caucasus, Caucasus. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes. Oh, yes, a Caucasus. <laughs> Caucasus. Why do you say Caucasus in Irish? You say Caucasus. Actually, doesn't know. Caucasus. Oh, Caucasus. Yeah. Uh, the Caucasus. Caucasus. Well, I was talking to Ar Arnon. A while ago, when I was over there, I was on in Azerbaijan on the Caspian, yeah. and they had this huge in Baku. They had a huge temple too. What's that? Is a heart? Is that Zoroastrian? Zoroastrian. That's the temples with fire that's temples. That's what I saw. Yeah, all yeah. these fire temples. Yes, yeah. it goes way back. You saw it. Yeah. It's huge, isn't it? That was the Caspian. Yeah, the Caspian. Yeah. Is it? Isn't there some kind of a? Volcano or something like that, where the fire comes out of the isn't Baku or is that oil? I know well, it's the oil it's capital. Just, it's just there's so much oil. I know it's, it's the it's the it's, the, it's, it's the distribution. Yeah. yeah, but maybe that's because there was an old um, fire associated with Baku. But they had big temples. Big, I don't know what they were. Fire. Quite old Tashkade in Farsi, but I call it fire temple in English. Yeah, yeah, fire that's right. Fire temples. They are round and they're made of dough. Right. break depending mm -hmm. what. Or marbles or whatever, or yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. They are using some of this today. Mm -hmm. Is there any connection between the name Baku and Baal? You know, is there any anything? I don't know. See, these are things to be found. Huh? You know, is is uh, just because it begins to be with Baal. Um, uh, but anyway, Baku is um, noted. I, I, you know, I don't know much about it, but it it is associated with fire and with uh, the god of fire. And this fire temple is there, 500, 600 BC. It was definitely BC, 400, 500. I should bring in some pictures I have up there. I'd like to see it. Oh, yeah? Huh. Well, it's just very interesting to me that, um, you know, that's <coughs> Baal and the sun worship, and so many things seem to have come from that part of the world. And it fits perfectly in with the uh, Lar Garbala which was long considered to be purely mythological by the guy mentioned in that book. What was his name again? That Dr. O'Curry said he said it was all mythology, you know, the Irish history, whereas O'Curry said, no, 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 it's, more, it's better documented than almost any other European history, certainly more than British history. What was his name? Um, Scottish name. Um, on your on your map there, he he was uh, you know, <coughs> he was famous for down pardon Macintosh or not Macintosh oh man uh, no go take a look at it um I, I want to get that guy's name chop chop get up chop chop get up there um <coughs> now he was he was a very famous scholar who was absolutely 100% certain that Ireland had no history and that just that it made up some mythology, you know. He was quite sure about that. But what thank God. Pardon? What year were you looking No, at the very Macintosh, yeah. Macintosh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Um, but thank goodness for O'Curry, who uh, proved him wrong. And um, well, not proved. Yeah, just pointed out that he was just typical um, British person who wanted to uh, eradicate any silly belief that Ireland may have had an historical past, not just a mythological past. But I noticed here there's a little piece, I knew there was a little piece in here somewhere about Baku. Lost it already again. Darn it. Uh, there it is. The natural flames that issued from the earth, I knew there was something about that, and were regarded as divine, have pointed out the practical pointed out to the practical moderns the minerals oil deposits of Baku. <clears throat> so it looks as if Baku was burning long before they knew anything about oil or what was, you know, natural gas was coming out of there and, and burning. So it makes sense. But uh, the natural flames that issued from the earth. So yeah, I remember I had read somewhere that that was the case, that Baku had some kind of uh, flames coming out of the earth on a fairly permanent basis. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so the idea of fire and fire worship and so on. Um, and uh, somewhere else I read where, well, you know that the Egyptians used to uh, keep fires in their tombs, apparently. I don't know how they got air to them, but... but um, well, they had air shafts. Did they? Yeah. Air shafts in the pyramids. Huh. Because I read somewhere where in, in 15 something or other um, they discovered a flame still burning in the daughter of Virgil. I think it was Virgil. So the idea in of tomb in her so tomb. Was <laughs> I, I think maybe we need to rediscover that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, for 1,500 years or more. Yeah, it is. But there are, there are things like that that definitely should be examined more, more carefully. I don't know what the source of fuel on that was. But whatever it was, it certainly was efficient. Um, so, so we don't know uh, what what they knew, but certainly we know that they. There we are. Um, uh, in 1540, a lamp was reported still burning in the tomb of Cicero, not Virgil, uh, in the tomb of Cicero's daughter. Figure that one. Huh. So, um, lights were buried in urns. Um, Herodotus speaks of lamps in the tombs of Egypt. Augustine wrote of lights inextinguishable by either rain or wind. Asbestos wicks of lamps were known in Greek temples. So, the idea of keeping a lamp alight, um, the Buddhist priests made use of asbestos wicks. Um, so there's a lot of examples of perpetual lamps uh, being used <coughs> around the world. Um, and apparently the, there was a one a very well-known example in Kildare. And that's where the, um, the story of St. Bridget comes from. But it seems like it goes much, much back before that. So there definitely was a... Um, a, uh, a perpetual flame uh, in Kildare. Um, and um, as late as, uh, where was it I saw, where a Dublin bishop was throwing holy water on it to throw it out. No, kidding. But anyway, he, <laughs> he was de determined anyway to, to, as late as the 1800s, I think. Yeah. Ooh. No. Um, the Archbishop of Dublin, 1220, not 11, shocked at this revival of fire worship under the name of Christianity, ordered the Kildare fire to be extinguished. What year? 1220. So, of course, there was a revival of Christianity in Ireland around that time. 
after the Normans came. They came in 1167. So by 1220, the church was, the, the Roman church was firmly established in, um, in Ireland, well, becoming to be established. That's probably the more, most important aspect of the, the Norman conquest was this was a reconquest, if you like, of Roman Christianity. Prior to that, it was sort of a, a loose uh, Christianity. But anyway, um, as an example of that, the, uh, the fire worship in Kildare had re-emerged. Um, but even, even today, Ireland Catholics in Ireland are known as RCs, Roman Catholics. <laughs> yeah. As opposed to here. But... Well, actually, it's the English that still call themselves Catholics. They're just not Roman Catholics. They like to think of themselves as Catholics, and that's why they, they think it's a worldwide church and all that stuff. So, you know, again. Yes. 